something you want to avoid. So what's the biggest nightmare that we tend to see and you want to understand the path of the entry side shoulder which becomes the block shoulder. Now the biggest nightmare that a thrower can get into in my opinion perhaps is the top distance killing mistake and it's pulling the shoulder around. So in the throw, one of the things that you're trying to do is understand your basic angle so that you can stay long and you can get this arm moving. And this arm has to move a very specific way to pull you into the throw so that you pull out into the delivery. So here's the thing that you want to avoid at all costs as you develop as a thrower, it's pulling the shoulder. So at any time you turn the arm and the shoulder together, that's typically gonna wind up causing you to fall and then you're gonna come in here and then you're gonna pull. Now I've seen just recently we had an athlete, he has a really great block, hits it, but he pulls here. So he turns his hip through he blocks real well, but he's turning his hip and pulling his shoulder back. So one of the things that, again, we'll talk about in camps in our program is we want to deliver a knockout punch. We want that shoulder nice and strong and right. You don't see knockout punches in professional MMA or boxers throwing punches like this. It's bam. They're going to get that whole delivery side in. That's what's going to deliver that knockout blow. So we want to deliver the knockout blow in your throw. That means learn to not have the left shoulder pulling around. And that's gonna start at all phases. So you're gonna see it here. And sometimes people are saying, throw the arm. And that we agree with, but there's a right way and a wrong way to move the arm. And if you move that shoulder with it, you're gonna be here and you're gonna be seeing this type of stuff. And the block pulls around late. And now you're pulling off the throw instead of pulling here and coming into the throw. And that's the thing we wanna avoid. So this is a super, simple tip but what you want to do is look at your video and if you see your shoulder cutting in so when you're in the back of the circle if you see the shoulder cutting in or you see yourself doing a, a half the turn or 180 and your shoulder is cutting like this and you're pulling around and your block elbow you can look in this camera and you see that block elbow over here you're in trouble because when you look at the great throwers, you're going to see that block elbow here. If you're looking at shot putters, you see it here. You do not see this type of emotion from the best throwers in the world throwing the biggest distances. And you want to learn that at a young age because if you start developing rip around shoulder, I'll tell you this, as a private coach who sees people from all over the US, even from other countries, I see that as one of the, when I get an athlete who has that, I really let them know how much of a limitation is and how much could distance that's costing them because it's costing them immediate distance and it's costing them development distance. Look at your film. If you see that shoulder pulling around, time to get rid of that. It's the top distance killer. It's a habit that's hard to break, but be patient and really focus on it because it'll make all the difference in the world. And if you want to know how to break it in more depth, check out our throwing chain reaction program. Links in the description. Hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, check out the links below. used to a little bit upper body dominant. Okay, that's a little better. Now I just want you to really concentrate on pulling that left arm down. Okay, so why does it feel off? You're so upright, you cut the corner. You gotta get long so you can come around. Long forward. See, that was better. You just missed the release a little bit, but do you see how much of a difference that makes? That was a lot better. Now, see how your left leg is locked? It can't be locked because it's going to pull you out of position. Where this is at, this is going to come down. See where this is at? Boom. So I'm going this way versus you're coming around. You're kind of doing what a lot of kids will do. You're doing kind of a combo pre-block stand throw. If I'm here, I naturally want to put my foot in the right position. Action, reaction. All of, everything's going to be a reaction. So when I create the angle, see how the angle is what pulls you onto the ball, not flexing. That was better. That was better. If you're doing the static wind, you got to start here okay. because you got to wind it right up to the high point. Okay. So you're starting here and you're trying to wind up, which is kind of screwing you up. Yeah. That wasn't bad though. Yeah, that was much better. 
Okay, it's close. That was better. Yeah, there you go. Good job. I'm gonna seriously get one of those. That was good. That was all right though. That was the two, the one, two, five, and that was a pretty good, like the movement on it was pretty good though. You want to avoid it at all costs because it's going to impact your discus in a negative way as well. So one of the questions we received was, why is it that I can do my stand throw? So when you see me throw here and we wind back and I'm going to get that off my, my middle finger, what happens? And if I'm doing a half turn throw, if I'm going to be here and I'm coming through, and I'm gonna throw it this way. Why is it that on those I can throw? So this is our pillar five, six and pillar three, four, five, six in, in what we were in our chain reaction system. When I add pillar one, two, why is it that now the discus is coming off of the middle finger? Good question. And one of the basics is when we're in the stand throw, when you guys are learning to stand now, whether you do it right or wrong, we just gonna put the discus in this position and it's easy to keep the discus back. When we starting to add pillar one and two to our full throw, we're changing how the arms carried. So what happens is we talk about how the thumb angle changes on the discus and we start to see the hand pointing like this. And when we're doing stand throws, it's easy to drag the discus here. What happens is when we start to add pillar one and two, so when we get back to this position or we go to a full throw or we go to our South African drills or we're doing any of this type of movement, this is where people run into problems on keeping the discus back. So we see this as a big problem with quite a few people. And what is typically happening is that carry position that you will do easier on your stand throw, again, pillar five, six, or your half turn modified wheels, we call them, will be your pillar three, four, right? We're moving three, four, five, six. It's easier, you're starting basically with that arm back. In the full throw, you would think keeping it back, but you've got to open up and what happens is people start to get uncomfortable and they're carrying the discus. And now the hand is sitting like this. So the thumb and hand goes from here so you see this line to here. So one of the things that you want to understand is that now what, why that changes and why it starts to come off the middle finger is because when I get to the full throw and I start to carry the discus or I turn the discus over the orbit and the shoulder, you're starting to throw yourself off balance. You're going to wind up turning the hand and you're going to have the discus like this and no longer stretched like this. And we want to see that hand and thumb in this position so that the discus is coming off of this index finger. Now, the faster you spin the discus, the longer it stays in the air. This is something you need to learn and develop. And many beginning throwers don't really adequately know how to spin the discus. So buying a big expensive rim weight disc, some $400 disc, when you don't have the skill set to maximize that is not necessarily the most advantageous thing. Now, whether you have a low rim weight disc or a high rim weight disc, if you know how to spin the discus, the distance is going to be relatively relatively close, but the key is if you don't, the distance is going to be significantly different because you can't adequately spin the heavy rim weight disc. Now, why again is it coming off of the middle finger? One of the things we'd recommend, we posted a video called how to add 20 feet to your throw, talking about the grip and release in the discus, and you can go back and check that, but what we're kind of reiterating is specifically why is it always coming off the middle finger? And that is gonna be, you're gonna be having to see something in your carry position. So we've worked with a number of athletes. Again, the biggest point, what you wanna understand is what you need to be working on is how to release the discus. So doing some more walkthroughs and drills and static throws are going to be some simple things you can do. So we like to do some basic drills where we're going to be here and now that's going to teach you how to move and keep the discus back and that's going to set up that better hand position which is going to change. Now some people say well I have a really long middle finger and some people do but even if it's that long it's still a matter of how you are angling the hand and now you're able to still have the index finger is, is primarily what's on the rim of the discus and it's going to be able to snap and spin far. So quick simple tip today if you guys are having a hard time and that discus is coming off your middle finger and you know that is not what it's supposed to do because that middle finger shouldn't be used for anything but grabbing things. So you want to make sure that it's coming off of this finger. You got to play and realize that it's really what it's coming in is, is how you're carrying the discus that has a huge impact. That's going to affect your orbit and your radius and the amount of power and your balance typically throughout the throw. So 
this is a simple fix, but it takes a few weeks. Be patient. You might have a bunch of crappy throws, but you have to realize that something you're doing in your throw, at some point you're getting that hand position from here to here, and now that's what's gonna wind up having your hand, your main finger come off, you're shortening your radius, and you're, you're likely turning the discus up, it's coming off the middle finger and you're gonna lose a lot of distance. And none of us wanna do that. All right guys, so hopefully that is a helpful tip. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, comment below on other things you'd like to see, and we will see you on the next video.